I want to talk about kingdom overflow. Um, and 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 as as we're in this series, the overflow room, which speaks to what it means to 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 sit in a space of more than enough. To know that we actually do serve Jehovah Jireh, the great provider, the Lord who is able to provide. And in John 10.10, Jesus paints this picture of overflow as he welcomes us into his family with the good news of our Christ. And he says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly as he speaks of purpose and power and productivity and the fullness of his spirit being actively engaged in our lives and, and the results of that. Well, as we think about this whole concept of, of kingdom overflow, whenever you follow Jesus around and you listen to him speak throughout the Gospels, he seems to point all of us to a larger picture, the kingdom, the, a larger family, a larger body, a larger purpose. He seems to point us, as you hear him all throughout the Gospels, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is, of heaven is at hand. And he's always talking about the kingdom. He, his commitment is, is to point us to the larger picture and to know that all of us are a small piece of a bigger plan, a small piece of a larger picture. And he's always trying to get us from focusing so much so on the smaller piece. Me, my, and I. And to focus on the will of the Father, the plan of the Father, and the kingdom of God, the family of God, the plans, the bigger plans of God, the bigger perspectives of God, the bigger ideas of God. And when we think of overflow, quite often we can think from a personal perspective. What does that mean for me? What God has for me. What God is going to do for me. What God is going to give me. But when we look at this, this passage, this passage seems to give us a broader, more kingdom picture. As Jesus seems to point us in a greater way to a larger idea. And he seems to point us, what I like to say is kingdom overflow. As we think of more than enough, he shows us other ways that we should consider Embracing this idea of more than enough. What it means to believe for more than enough. Maybe in some unconventional ways. When you look at the story, the scripture says that Jesus is, is, is at the lake. Maybe, maybe it's Lake Michigan. Jesus uh, is, is at the lake of Genesaret. And the scripture says um, that, 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 that he's in the area. And, and, and Peter and James and John, um, who are business owners, they are fishermen. Um, they've recently been fishing. Um, they, they fished all night. They didn't catch anything. And the scripture says the next day has come. And, and Jesus shows up um, to teach or to preach his word. And the scripture says people hear that Jesus is in the neighborhood and they start rushing from everywhere. If, 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 if you look at your Bible, the Bible says that, 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 that Jesus um, is, is there. Verse number one, it says the multitude is pressing in to hear the word of God. They're ignited and excited. They want to hear what he's got to say. They, they, they want to hear what's on his mind. And, and, and the scripture says that as they rush in to hear from Jesus, they, 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 they want to hear his words. They want to hear his thoughts. Somebody must know there's power in his words. And, 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 and they crowd in and they gather all around him. And, and the lake is jammed. Packed. It, 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 it's, it's crazier than Lollapalooza. It's crazier than the Taste of Chicago. It's, 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 it's crazier than the Chosen Few Picnic. It's jam-packed, and they all want to hear what Jesus has got to say. It, and the text says, as they, they gather around to hear what Jesus has got to say, uh, there's somebody in the crowd that you might not expect to be in the crowd. Peter is in the crowd. And, 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 and Peter is in the crowd listening to Jesus teach. Now, here's what's significant to me. Peter is in the crowd, but he's not yet a disciple. Peter is sitting in church, but he's not yet a member of the church. Peter is sitting. Can I preach today? Pete, 
Peter's sitting in the group, but he is not yet officially a disciple. But, but, but the Lord, when he takes attendance, he can mark him present. When, when he takes attendance, but who's uh, listening out for the word of God is Peter present. And I just want to say to somebody, number one, as we consider this idea of kingdom overflow, kingdom overflow, number one, begins with your attendance. With your attendance, can I say to somebody, if an unbeliever can be marked present, what about you? Because just like your job is taking attendance and just like school takes attendance, you better know heaven is taking attendance. Heaven, heaven is taking attendance. Are, are you present to see what Jesus has got to say? Are you present to be in his presence? Do you have an overflow of respect and honor and admiration for Jesus so much so that he's got to have your attendance? You, you've got to be you've got to make time to get in his presence whether that's I know we got time to go to everybody else's house but sometimes we're too busy to get to the house of God I wish you I wish you would know that if you want God in your house every single day you ought to make one day to get to his house. Can I talk to some real people? The reason why we got to have good attendance for him and with him is because he's got perfect attendance in our lives. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother and everything you ever been through, you can mark him present. Everywhere you ever been, you can mark him present. Every up, every down, every in, every out, sickness, healing, broke money. He's always present. Mad, present, frustrated, present, successful, present. The psalmist says, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Somebody holler, present. I want to I want to show up. I want to show up. I want to be counted in the number. I can't keep up with where you at or what you doing. But as for me, myself, I want him to mark me present. I want him to mark me in the group. I want him to mark me in the crowd. Hebrews 10, 25 says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. He says, don't forsake. He says, make time to get together and celebrate me. Oh, get the, you can praise him at your house. You, you can praise him at your house. You can praise him, but sometimes, preferably once a week, I'd like for all of y'all to get together after all I kept you through, all I brought you through, all I provided for you, all of the ways I made, the doors I opened, I kept you, you. I want all y'all to get together and celebrate me. To I'm sorry, I got excited, I'm yelling. Attendance, an overflow of attendance. Here I am, Jesus. You can count on me to be in the crowd. Number two, um, attention. Attention. The text says, the text says, if you check him out, the text says that Jesus is teaching. And, 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 and the multitudes are tuned in. They, they were pressing in because they wanted to hear the word. <laughs> they, 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 they say, Jesus, you got our undivided attention. Why? Jesus, while you're teaching, we're not, we're not tweeting. Jesus, unless you're tweeting the word, you want to bless somebody else. Come on, church. We, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not writing notes. I'm not, I'm not, Jesus, while the word is going forth, uh, I'm not checking out it, who in the room so I can holler before church is over. I'm, I'm, you, you, you got my attention I, I need I, I, you got you got you got my you got my attention I I want to I want to have um, the right mindset and the right mentality and so I need your words on the inside of me so I can have the right mind of uh, Philippians 2 5 let this mind be in me which was also in Christ Jesus somebody needs his mind today um, so you can handle whoever or whatever you got to face tomorrow I, I I need to get your thoughts 
and your ideas because when I think of kingdom overflow, it speaks to me having a, a kingdom mindset which speaks to you. You got ideas that are different from the ideas that I had as an unbeliever. You you, you got perspectives. Um, I, I'm, I'm supposed to look at life differently. Look at my opportunities differently. Look at my trials differently. My tribulations differently. My resources differently. My decisions differently. My illness differently. When I'm weak, then am I made strong. I'm, I'm to have your way of thinking. That's why Romans chapter number 10 um, uh, 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 the Bible says, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 2, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind he 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 says listen um we we got to we got to give our attention to the word of god because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and so i've got to get filled up if i'm going to pour out if 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 i'm going to exert energy i got to be filled i got to be filled with your fuel can i talk to somebody in the building i, I need i need i need my faith strengthened i need my faith increased I, I i need to give my attention to the word because joshua 1 8 says meditate on this book of law day and night and be careful to do all that's within it then you will prosper and have Good success. Uh, who wants to prosper? Who wants to do well? Who wants to have good success? Um, we, we, can, we can read everybody's novel. We can read everybody's book. We can get everybody's advice. But I got news for you. There is no greater book for success than this one. There is no greater book. Who's got better ideas than God? Who, who's got better perspective than God? Who's got better outlook or better insight? Come on, Jenkins, than God. Who, who has a better philosophy than God? Who's got a better perspective than God? Who knows what's going to happen before it happens more than? He says, I got to, you, 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 I, I want to, I want to have a desire to give you my attention. See, Kingdom Overflow says this. They're sitting there listening to him teach, which says that this, God invites us, watch this, to be students of his word. They are sitting there listening to Jesus teach the word of God. God invites us to be disciples. That's not just follow. That's just not just follower. That's also learner. See, when you're a disciple, you're not, you're not, just, you're not just trying to walk like him. You're trying to think like him. Can I talk to somebody? Can I when you're a disciple, you're a learner. You're always looking to learn more about him. Kingdom overflow says, I have an overflowing desire to learn about him. I, I want to understand what he thinks and what he's got to say. Kingdom overflow speaks to, watch this, being a student of the word of God. Unfortunately, there are so many believers that have lived and died thinking the preacher is the only one that's supposed to know the Bible. There are so many believers. There are so many believers um, that, 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 that have not understood that God wants all of us to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Number one, um, attendance and overflow of attendance. I'm in the group. Uh, um, uh, number, 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 number one, attendance. Number two, attention. Um, number three, action. Action. Um, when, when, when you speak of kingdom overflow, um, listen to what Jesus says after he's done preaching. Um, uh, it's right there in the text. I'm not making it up. Um, the scripture says, uh, verse four, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Uh, uh, when, he, when, he, when he got done, he says, he says, Peter, he says, oh, oh, I want you to stretch. Yeah. Uh, after he heard the word, he says, now oh, you've been filled up. Now, don't you just sit here flowing how you have been flowing. But I want you to lie. I want you to go to another level. I, I want you to go way out there. I want you to get out from around. Uh, the shore. Uh, uh, get out of your comfort zone. Get get out of your norm. Get 
Get out of what you've been accustomed to. Get, get out of what's been good, feeling good to you. What's been fit. And I want you to launch out. I, I want you to get away from everything that feels comfortable. You got a word in you. We should have put faith in you that will lead you to a place to trust me even when it feels uncomfortable. I want you to, I want you to launch out. I want you to, I want you to, now that you heard the word, I want you to, I need some action now, Peter. I want you, you, you done sat under some good word, Peter. I've, I've taught you a good word. Now, I didn't fill you up for you to park. Um, I, I felt you up for you to go somewhere. I f- filled you up for you to do something. I, I, I want you to, come on, let's throw a launch party. You, 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 you received the word. Now let's get ready to do the word. Let's have a launch party. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to listen. After you heard the word of God, you, you better know it's a launching pad and not a lily pad. It's not for you to just sit there and get fat and full. But 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 you've been filled up with the word so I can take you somewhere. I'm getting ready to do something. Who am I talking to? God has put some word in you because it's got to come out of you through some form of action. His word will not return void. And somebody's got to know that when his word comes in, it will come out in a way of action, of function of productivity can I talk to somebody and say to you the reason why I'm getting excited is because somebody I'm talking to is getting ready to have a launch party somebody is getting ready to launch out somewhere somebody is getting ready to launch into something the devil wants you to stay on the shore the devil wants you to sit on the boat and watch everybody else launch out but I got news for you you sit next to somebody before this year is over they get ready to start something, do something, be something, accomplish something that nobody but God can make happen. I wish you would give somebody a high five and tell them let's have a launch part. I don't know what you're getting ready to launch. I don't know what I'm getting ready to launch, but the word is launch. Hit somebody and tell them, get up, get up, get up, get up. Here's why you got to tell them, get up. You got to tell them, get up. Because when Jesus said, launch out, Peter said, Jesus, we fished all night and we didn't catch nothing. Jesus been there, done that, got the t-shirt. See, sometimes, sometimes you need a little encouragement, see. See, some see you sitting next to somebody, you don't know what they've been through, where they've come from, what they've gone through. I know they look good, but they've seen some tough days. I, I know they don't look like what they've experienced or what they've been through, but they had some losses and they had some mishaps and they had some empty fishing excursions. But I got news for you your past don't have to cancel your future. The stuff you tried by yourself, I double dog dare you to try it with Jesus. Jesus said to Peter, you couldn't handle it by yourself. But he says, I want you to launch with me. You tried to fish without me and you ain't catch nothing. And every time you tried with Jesus, you're going to hit zero without Jesus. Every time you try to think without Jesus, you, you, the odds of hitting zero are very high. Uh, every time you try to figure it out without Jesus, your odds of failure are very high. Every time we try to move without Jesus, the odds of failure are very high. But if you try with Jesus, what you tried without Jesus, watch this, according to his word, anything. Anything, anything, anything can happen. All things are possible if you can only believe. Which brings me to number four, ability. The Bible says, uh, 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 oh, Jesus says, launch out. I like Peter's words. Remember, Sister Peter ain't joined the church yet. But Peter's heard about Jesus. Read it. So he says, well, we fished all night and we didn't catch nothing. But since it's you talking. (laughs) 
You're not a man that you should lie. Neither is the son of man that you should repent. Since you said launch out, I'm going to take you at your word. Since, since you said step out on faith. Since, since you said make the phone call. Since, since you said take the job. Since, since you said make the, make the move. I'm going to make the move at your word. And the scripture says we're talking about his ability. Now when they get out. He throws his nets. Now you got to imagine now using my sanctified imagination. They go out there and they really done. Because when Jesus got there, they weren't in the boat and they washing their nets. You know when you washing dishes, you threw. Can I talk to some real people in the building? They, they, some of y'all are done. Somebody's family is getting ready to come back together right now. You finished. It's over. But Jesus said, no, it ain't. I'm finna get in the middle of this and put this thing. <laughs> Some of y'all are mad at somebody. I'm done. No, you ain't. God is finna get in the middle of this where there are two or three gathered together in. And you know why he says two or three? Because all it takes is you, somebody else, and he's the third. They launch out, throw their nets, and the scripture says that fish come on, church. Come on. Fish start jumping in the net. Fish just start jumping. Catfish and white fish and crappies and trout just fish what's your fish what's your fish go and call it out tilapia that's right salmon go and call out your fish look at you getting happy thinking about your fish the fish start jumping in the net so much talking about God's ability now the nets started breaking so many fish got in the boat. I'm talking about his blessing power. That they had to call in for backup. Generally, you need backup for your problems. You don't need backup for your blessing. But it's so much overflow. They need backup for the blessing. It's too much for me to handle. I need another boat. The second boat came, and it was so many fish that the boat started sinking. Can I talk to somebody and say to you that God has got the power to bring a net-breaking boat sinking? Net-breaking boat sinking. Net-breaking boat sinking. Net-breaking boat sinking. Net-breaking boat Boat sinking, net breaking, boat sinking, net breaking, boat sinking, net breaking, boat sinking. Blessing to your house. I wish you would yell at somebody. Overflow. Overflow. I wish you were speaking over your house. Net breaking, boat sinking. Net breaking, speaking over your whole row. Net breaking, boat sinking. And you do know God can bless your house so much that it'll spill over into your neighbor's boat. Spill over into your neighbor's house. Give somebody a high five and tell them I believe God for a net breaking, boat sinking, blessing in my life. Anybody in here know he's got the power? Give somebody a high five and tell them he's able. God has got the power. If you got the faith, if you got faith to sign, 
of a mustard seed you can tell a mountain get out of my way lean on somebody and tell them I don't know what your last night looked like I got news for you a neck breaking boat sinking blessing is in your future trust God even when you can't trace him hold on to his word and I, 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 I know he's able to bring it to pass anybody in here know he's got the power give somebody a high five and tell him I got one word for you overflow overflow for your business overflow for your finances overflow for your children overflow for your household overflow for the vision overflow for your body overflow for your spirit overflow for your mind overflow for your heart yeah 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 won't he do it won't he do it say yeah say yeah Woo! give somebody a high five and tell them god is able god is able get your faith up get your second win get your joy back get your fours up it's the fourth quarter some of y'all have been staggering some of y'all have been stumbling but god is going to give you power because they that wait on the lord he will renew your strength your on wings like eagle shall go net break boat sinking net breaking boat sinking net breaking boat sinking net Breaking, boat sinking, net breaking, boat sinking, net breaking, boat sinking. Somebody give him praise. stand with me. Come on. We done. We done. God is getting ready to rock your boat. God's getting ready to rock your boat. God's getting ready to rock your boat. God is getting ready to rock your boat. Peter wasn't even, he wasn't even a disciple. God said, I'm, I'm getting ready to show you something. I'm getting ready to show you something. Peter, you talking about your lack. Let me introduce you to my abundance. Peter, you want to talk to me about your deficit. Let me introduce you to a surplus. And it comes in many forms, right? A lot of people, when they think of overflow, they only think about money. That's one form. God can do that. God can do that. But I was talking to a family after worship this last service. They said, they're saying goodbye 
to their loved one. They need an overflow of strength. And that's real for them, right? Like Peter, is something that doesn't feel or look like is possible. Am I making sense to anybody? Somebody. In this instance, this was their business. They weren't like hobby fishermen. They were entrepreneurs, which says God can bless your business. Net breaking boat sinking. For somebody else, that might be an overflow. An overflow of opportunity. Somebody in here, like Peter, you done applied, not all night, but you've been applying for a job for months, for some of y'all for years. God can give you more, more interviews than you can handle. God can give you more clients than you can handle. Some of y'all, your joy has been on nothing. God can give you joy unspeakable. So much joy that everybody around you, they can't, they can't stay sad around you. They can't stay down around you. They can't stay out of it around you. You got so much joy that it spills out of your boat into their boat. They're exploding. Somebody needs an overflow of faith. Your faith has been on E. Faith has been on E. It's been on E. But God can break your net and sink your boat. He can weigh you down. Listen, and some of y'all have been through this. Sometimes the blessings will sink in their boat. Sometimes it's not bad stress, it's good stress now. How am I going to handle all of this? How am I going to be able to keep up with everything God, God is putting in my hands and God is opening doors? How, how do I handle all of this? How, how do I deal with everything that he's given me? He, he put all this in my hands and put all of this on me. It's, it's so much on me. It's a problem, but it's a good problem. How do I handle all of this? All of this he's placing in my hands. Net breaking. Boat sinking. But as we stand together, I know some of y'all feet hurt. Hang with me. Here's what you don't want to miss. The kingdom overflow says, God, you can count on me. For an overflow of my attention, overflow of my attendance, overflow of my action. Because a whole lot of people want to see net breaking and boat sinking and won't embrace the action that he's saying embrace. The obedience. Not my plan, but his plan. The net breaking and boat sinking is connected to obeying his words not disconnected but after you see his ability because God said listen I can do that I can break your net I can sink your boat but here's what I don't want you to miss the assignment that I have for you listen to what he says at the end of the text he says he says uh, uh, Peter you see all these fish I want you to catch men like this.
can I bless you? Uh huh. Can I overflow? Yes. But kingdom overflow says it's not just about you bringing overflow to me, but it's about me bringing overflow to you. Says Peter, Peter, uh, uh, I want you to catch man. Watch this. The scripture says, Peter, don't miss this. It says, he, he forsook it all and followed him. Listen, don't ask God for nothing you ain't willing to give him back. Don't ask God for overflow and not be able to give it right back to him. Don't ask him for a raise and you can't give it back to him. Don't ask him for a job and you can't give it back to him. Don't ask him, Abraham, for a child and you can't give him back to him. Don't ask him for a financial increase and you can't write the check back to him. Don't ask him for joy. Don't ask him for a talent or a gift and you can't give it back. kingdom overflow at the end of the day he says I want you to be fishers of men and so at the end of the day kingdom overflow says it's not just about overflow for me it's about how I create overflow for the kingdom how I help bring souls in how I break, help bring relationships in how I help bring resources in and bring people in to build his kingdom God says, Peter, in that breaking boat sinking, I got that. That's nothing. Boom. And listen, let me just tell, let me just say this. Let me just bless somebody with this. Peter gave it all back. Same Peter in John 21 quit the disciples, left. What does he do? Go fishing. What does he do? Fish all night again without Jesus because he left him. And what happened? He caught nothing. The next morning, Peter and him out there on the water again. Who's standing at the shore? Jesus. Jesus yells out. They didn't know he was there. Have y'all any fish? They say no. Jesus says, he didn't say you did me wrong. He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. What happened? Net breaking boat set. All I'm trying to tell somebody is he can do it again. He can do it again. Come on, yell at somebody. He can do it again. Even when you give it, he can do it. He can do it again. And he's so good. Even when you're wrong, like Peter is, he will be good because that's all he can be. And do it. Oh. So, Lord, I thank you for overflow. I thank you for kingdom overflow. I thank you for a church and a body of believers with a heart for you, a heart after you. Father, we commit today that we give you our desire and overflow of our attendance. We want you to mark us present. We want to be in your presence. We want to honor you. We want to worship you. We want you to mark us present. We, 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 don't, we don't want to have no distance. Father, we want to commit an overflow of our attendance. We want to commit an overflow of our attention. Father, however, we need, to, we need to be in position to receive your word. However that is, whatever that strategy is, line it up for somebody so they can hear from you every single day on a continuum. I pray, God, for action. An overflow of action. Help us to be obedient. Woo, this flesh and this flesh we live in. This flesh we live in doesn't want to obey your word. But I pray the word that's on the inside of us will help us to obey. Your Holy Spirit will help us to obey. In the name of Christ, we thank you for fruit bearing action. We thank you, God, as we move in action that you manifest your ability. And I thank you in advance right now for net breaking, boat sinking blessing. For my neighbor, wherever there's lack, I thank you that it's reversed. 
in the name of Jesus and you meet them according to your word, your will, and our obedience in Jesus' name. I thank you that we embrace the assignment, the higher calling that you have for all of us. Beyond us being blessed, I thank you that you call us to be a blessing. And I thank you that you bring overflow to us that it might flow through us. And I thank you, oh God, that you make us fishers of men. We call in souls from the north, the south, the east, and west. They're men, women, boys, and girls that need to know you and don't know you. I pray that you touch their hearts and that you raise us up like you did Peter and the others to be used in a major way. With our time, our talent, and our treasure, we thank you that we have a commitment to kingdom overflow. And our commitment is not just to experience it, but our commitment is to create it for your kingdom and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody give God whatever praise you got. We thank him for his word.